Yahoo or Bing. So, you know, just be mindful that there are some differences. Why would you do that? You probably have uh, fewer hits, and so there's less of a list to look at. And even if you do some selective searching, you, you know, it's a, it'll be a little bit smaller search results that you get. And when it's a simple search and you're in a hurry, it might, it might work okay. Okay, thoughts on, on that? Yeah. What is the name of a meta search engine? Okay, in the middle of the first page, about three inches down from the top of the text, it has types of search engines, individual, and then meta. Okay. So Dogpile, I just mentioned, Dogpile, Ask.com, Clusty, these are examples of meta search engines. Okay. You might want to put that away. Is that, your, is that the Heba book? Is that the Heba book? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, the so the meta the you might use the um, dog pile is not a bad meta search engine if you if you want to go ahead and use that. Okay. Now with looking at the search engines, there are some uh, search engines that vary a little bit in how they're organized, and some of them are organized as directories. And what would be a good example of a directory that you're familiar with? With the phone, yellow pages, okay. Uh, you know, the, basically that's a directory. You uh, have a leak in your basement, or you're trying to find some uh, a plumber. You look in the yellow pages for a plumber, or probably on your phone now, or or computer, or whatever. But basically, they're um, uh, ways to find categories. And so Yahoo tends to have their homepage as a, as a category. And if you're interested in sports or entertainment or something, you can get to that pretty quickly. Um, other uh, of the uh, search, uh, search engines are, are set up as um, gateways or subject specific search engines. And those are called Vortals. OK. Um, if you go to the RMU library and you go to the card catalog searching, the card catalog search engine is a Vortal. Okay, it's only going to search the card catalog. And so you, if you put in a term um, that um, there isn't anything in the card catalog, it's not going to go out and search the rest of the web. You know, it's just going to search within that little area. Um, you want to buy a car, a used car. So where might you go to find a used car? On the web. The Kelly Blue Book. The Kelly Blue Book is a good place. You want to you want to sell your car. You want to find out how much you can get for your um, uh, 1983 Porsche, and uh, you go and plug in the information, the color, the condition, the all of the mileage, all that kind of information, and it'll give you a, a base price for what you you know probably could sell your car for. Okay, so that's very specific. Okay. So, um, if you want to uh, look for a job, monsters.com is a good place to, to go um, for jobs. If you, done, you know, my daughter-in-law is looking for somebody to, to help babysit, and, and uh, she, was, she was asking me and I said, if I would spread the word around. I said, well, the problem is that you know, they live way over in the east side of Pittsburgh, and it would be hard for people to get there and whatnot. And, so I didn't, didn't know about that, but I, but I was thinking, you know, other than the newspaper and the WAN ads and employment agencies and services that provide babysitting, um, you know, the, the other way to, to do that would be to go to monster.com and see what kind of, um, you know, if they advertise for uh, babysitting services. So are these Vortals or Vortals? These are Vortals. They're uh, subject specific. Vertical, vertical portal. So portal basically is kind of like Yahoo. It's a directory that will get you to where you want to go, but you, you're kind of picking your categories with the directories first before you go to the search engine. A vortal is basically a vertical 
portal uh, or a vertical search engine that is very subject specific. So the, the example that you gave for the RMU library and the card is the portal. Yes. If, uh, if on the set, bottom of the second page there are subject specific databases, they're called vertical portals or vortals. And libraries kind of fit into that category because they only search their library. At the National Library of Medicine, we have Entrez. Entrez is the search engine to help you find articles in PubMed. Okay. PubMed Central uses the same thing. So the, basically, it's the search engine only is within that um, web area and it isn't going to search all the libraries in the world. Yeah. To go back to Portal for a second, just so I can understand the difference. So, when I, I at one point I worked for a university, um, and to get into their intra, intranet, there was, it was that was a portal, correct? Right. Going to their homepage, that's the portal to their intranet. Right to their their page. Right to all those resources that are available. Robert Morris, you can get to the library. You can go to have student services. You can find all kinds of things within the so Robert there, Morris. So the Robert Morris homepage is it? Is it's an example, it would it would be like a portal. It would be an entry into an area where you can search. Okay, okay but it, if you search the the search engines within many of the portals, you don't you don't wind up. Um, finding things outside of that area. So it would be within that university or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't understand what this entrance, how, you know, because I mean, I understand how to access PubMed. Right. So what, what about this, this entrance makes? It's a search engine. How does PubMed, when you put in. a search engine meaning like, like uh, Google. Right. If you want to, you know, we're, I'm going to, we're going to spend some time with um, NIH and, and what's available there and we show you how to search and many of you say, well, you search already. Well, I'm going to show you a, hopefully a couple ways that will be a little different or new and basic, but, but you know, you have to have some type of application that is going to search the library. There's millions and millions of articles. Um, books. Is this going to be more specific of a search than if I? You could not use you could not use Google or, or Yahoo to easily search the contents of the National Library of Medicine. So okay. This is going to be more specific to that. That's right. Uh, so NIH kind of things, and particularly the National Library of Medicine, the search engine that's used at that site is going to be interest. And so when you type your last name in the author, you know, you want to find what, what you've published recently, you put your last name in there and the interest is going to search through the contents of the National Library of Medicine to try to find information for you. But it won't search outside of L, uh, National How Library of Medicine. You don't have to get to it. <laughs> It will, well, as soon as you, well, well, when we get to that, there'll be a, a search screen and you can type in Gordon, uh, I use my son's because I'm going to use his, uh, AJ uh, is his, his initials. And you type that into the search engine, you, you hit the go button and 33 articles pop up. And that is, and when I get to, that would be if I was on the, if I was on Google and I typed in Gordon or if I was on If you do website, that. Yeah, if you, if you type in your name on Google, okay, there will be hits. Um, you might get a Robert Morris hit, actually, um, because Robert Morris's uh, email database seems to be um, open source. Basically, it's on, available on the web. Um, we had somebody from the Czech Republic who contacted my husband and said, um, are you the person that posted information about a certain family? And um, my husband had made that post in 2001, and that was this winter that the young man contacted him. And uh, the, when I, I, I thought, how did he find, he, he went through the Robert Morris email. He, he got my husband's email address. 
And I thought, well, how did he do that? So I typed in my husband's name, and sure enough, Robert Morris' email address popped up as the first hit. So you might type, you, you, you know, your name's on, on the web. Um, yeah. you, you know, it is. And a lot of other people have similar names as you, but your name is there. So what you want to do is, um, you know, but that's, that's searching the web. You can't search the PubMed database by, by PubMed. You have to go to Entrez to search the database to get the, the most recent findings and even the past so findings. When I go in Right. Is it using Entrez to get the information? It, when no, it's getting no. What's happening is you're going to the PubMed server at the National Library of Medicine, and through Robert Morris. Robert Morris is the link. You know, okay, so here you are at RMU, and you're going to go ahead and say, well, I want to get to PubMed. First of all, I would tell you you can get to PubMed just by typing in PubMed.gov. Okay, you don't have to go through the Robert Morris. Uh, uh, portal to do to do that. So, but Robert Morris is ho hooking on to the National Library of Medicine server, their computer that's going to have a search engine that is Entrez. So when you type in at NLM, you're not at Robert Morris anymore. You left that. You know, okay, you jumped. You went went from one node to another node here, and so now you're at Entrez or at NLM at the PubMed search engine search screen, and you're using Entrez. It's a, it's a it's a the the for a search engine. Yeah. 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 But you don't actually sign into that search engine like I would. No. 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 Because you don't sign into Google, you don't sign into Dogpile, you don't sign into Yahoo, you don't sign into search engines. The search engines, that, the Robert Morris Library has a search engine that is searching their database. In fact, the librarian yesterday at this meeting I went to said that the, the program, the application for the library's RMU library uh, uh, database is not very good, <laughs> okay? She said it misses things. But if you ask the librarians on how to do it, then oh, you know, they have their tricks. They figured out where, where the glitches are. We're going to do NIH in a little bit here. So, um, you know, questions directly about interest. Let's hang on to them and we'll, we'll, we'll get to them. Um, Okay, so I'm on the bottom of page two. Uh, the 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 uh, so so the subject specific of vertical vertical portals. Cyrus is a science based um, search engine. If you you type in cyrus.com, you will only get and uh, you'll get a search screen and you type in your uh, like vcam and you. Uh, 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 cell protein, you go ahead and uh, type that in and it'll search the literature. It will search some of uh, the library of medicine, but not all. So this, those are kind of limited. Okay, now the one thing that most of the search engines won't do is the, the regular search engines is to, to get into the what's called the invisible web or the deep web. And basically that's the information that is behind a password. Okay, so if you um, log into a website and uh, like the RMU website and you have to use a, a log, uh, a password like for, to get your uh, email, then that's the search engines usually don't, can't get in there. Now I say usually because the, some of the uh, search companies have figured out ways to get past the, the passwords. But uh, in general, if it's a password protected site, it's likely that you're not going to be able to retrieve that information through a general search like with Google. Okay. So you have to get into, like the li li RMU library is probably not searchable. You wouldn't, if you typed in, you know, what is at the RMU library about um, a book by um, Smith and Gibbs. And uh, you're, you're probably not going to find that in Google. 
But if you go to the library at RMU, because you've, you've accessed that information and probably have done uh, uh, some login kind of uh, password protected kind of things, then, then you can do it. But the, the spiders and the robots aren't going to do it. OK? OK. Yeah. Hello? A handout? Uh, you, I, I gave it to you yesterday. Okay. Uh, and I don't know if I have an extra one. I might. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Then the last page. Um, a good good search strategies. Okay. So let's kind of. Well, there is a tutorial. Very. Um, the um, library at um, South Carolina has a very nice uh, website on, on how to search the web. And so there's a couple of times in the handout I've indicated um, the Buford Library uh, sites. And it is very good. And, it, and you can pick and choose what you want to look at. A little bit more information about portals and portals, um, more than what I explained here. So. Um, there, there's, it's, there's a very good tutorial that they have, and then they have information about in, individual things. And some of the strategies, they have a strategy page, which is some of this may be, be pulled off of, of uh, some of their hints. But, but it's good searching. You know, be as specific as you can be when you're making a search. Even in PubMed, you know, if you just write in Gordon, you're going to get a thousand hits because there's a lot of Gordons out there who have published research in the last 30 years, the information that's on PubMed. So what you have to do is narrow it down. And if you could put, if you know the author's first name, you know, put their, you don't have to put that full name, but the initials will help. Um, and for author searches, usually you don't have to put anything in quotes. You can, you can usually just find it. If you're using terms, like you want to find out about uh, arrhythmias, but you're interested in only ventricular arrhythmias, and you're interested in benign ventricular arrhythmias, those people who have you know, 100 PVCs a, a minute and uh, are doing fine and don't have any kind of uh, cardiac, uh, cardiac uh, disease or damage. So if you want benign ventricular arrhythmias, put it in quotes, OK? And what it's going to do is search for that term. But if you don't want to, if, but if that term doesn't appear in an article, you might want to search benign and A-N-D. Those are called Boleyn operators, and or not. Those are things you can put into the search to limit um, what, or to uh, yeah, limit the search to more specific things. So you can say benign and ventricular and arrhythmias. And what's going to happen is they're going to pop up with abstracts, articles that have those three terms in there. Okay. Yeah. Or whatever. And those Boolean, they have that right there, right? So that's what you're talking about? Right, you right. Some of them will add it on there. Like but if you, you put a quote. Or uh, mm -hmm. you can use that. Or would you, if I was just using a big search, if I was just on Google, would I want to do that with Google? Sure, sure. And, and so that will narrow it so that you're not looking at, you know, all the benign arrhythmias, all the ventricular arrhythmias. Uh, okay. So it recognizes yeah. those terms. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So that, that's not specific just for PubMed. It would be wherever you're, wherever you're going. Putting things like vitamin D, you want to find out about sunshine and vitamin D, why everybody in Pittsburgh is, has, is on the low category of having normal vitamin D levels, because we don't have much sunshine here. Uh, so the, you put vitamin D in quotes, and, and that's what's going to pop up. You know, you get B12 or C or anything else. Use nouns as keywords, not verbs or adjectives. That's not very good. 
Um, you can, um, as I have here, uh, list terms uh, by putting, if, putting a plus mark in front of uh, your word. So if you want to find out about when to discontinue swaddling babies, you, you swaddling is sort of the key. That's what you're interested in. And babies, you're not interested in swaddling people who are in, in uh, uh, psychiatric crises or whatever. Uh, and you want to look at what, when to discontinue. So putting that little plus mark can, can help. And you have to play around with this, see if it works for you on the search engine that you're using, because all search engines are going to be a little different. Be negative. Okay. If you want to um, um, uh, hunt, uh, you're, you're interested, you, you know, when you have a nice clear night and there are lots of stars out there and there's the Milky Way, and you think, ah, I'm going to search for the Milky Way. And so you put Milky Way in quotes, but what happens is you get the candy bar, you get chocolate, milk, you know, or you get a lot of other things that come along with that. So you can put a minus sign rather than a plus. You put a, say, Milky Way in quotes, minus chocolate, minus candy, so you won't get any of the candy hits. Okay. And then there's the Boleyn operators, and, or, and, and not, and not, are some of the Boleyn operators that you can use. And again, on, in the um, uh, Buffer Library uh, site, there's a nice um, discussion there about using Boleyn operators. Some searches, your search engines will plug them in automatically, others will not. Um, with Google, uh, certainly, uh, and with some of the other search engines, you can get uh, images, you can get maps, you can find your street on the, and you know, location that you want to go to. Um, you can um, do calculation. In the search screen, you do 2 plus 2 equals and press return and you'll get an answer. Okay. Uh, I use um, uh, define a lot. I'm, I'm not the best speller. I'm left-handed, and somewhere along the line, I think my brain got mixed up in terms of uh, spelling. So I'm not the best speller in the world. As a student nurse, I had always a dictionary in my pocket, so I didn't, didn't uh, have a lot of spell errors on my, my notes. But um, the, um, so I, I do define and then type the word that I want to, to try to spell. And if I, even if I just plug in a few, few of the letters, the beginning letters, uh, something will pop up. Like Massachusetts, if I want to spell that and I can't spell it, you know, then I just M-A-S-S-A, -S -S and then it'll pop up with Massachusetts and a whole bunch of other words that start with that. So. When you did the define, yeah. do, you, do you use any closer or anything? Nope. Nope. Because it's usually a single word. Right. Like I might want right. to define right. portal. Okay. So, or I'm, yeah, so I could, I could put define, portal, and it'll pop up with something. And, you know, it's going to be pretty broad. In fact, it may get you to a screen that gives you some um, uh, Wikipedia hits and AskGs, or not AskGs, but ask.com hits and things like that. So, but it works in most, most search, search engines. If you want an audio file or a multimedia file, Dogpile, the meta search engine, is probably a little bit better for that. But um, if you go to images from Google, there, there's a pop-up screen on the left that will let you do video files and things like that, Just so not just JPEGs and some of the typical things. So a word of caution in, in taking things off of the web, like um, an image. If you decide to use an image that you, you know, like um, you, you want to do a PowerPoint for a presentation and you need a good picture of a heart, okay, a human heart, uh, you can go on, on Google Images and find a heart, okay? And you go to that site, uh, you pick the image that you'd like, you click on it, and it gets you to the site where that image came from. Okay, so it'll direct you to the, the home page where that image was. And then from there, all you have to do is uh, 
click on your mouse, um, the arrow, put the arrow on the image, click your mouse, and drag the arrow, your mouse, off, off the page onto your desktop, and then let go, and basically the image will be copied and put on your desktop. The thing you want to put with that image is where you got it from because those images generally are copyrighted. And if you put them in your PowerPoints, your um, 